This is Eric from Enigma Engineering, and I'm gonna show you how to take a car hauler that looks like this. This is totally unmodified, and we added steel to it, some high strength steel and a frame for a 12,000 pound Badlands winch from Harbor Freight. We put a deep cycle marine battery in it, a trickle charger with a solar panel, and it's diamond plate. The box is from Northern Tool, and it matches the trailer really well, I think. Northern Tool makes really good boxes, here it is with that fair lead and the solar panel on top. The point of this video is I'm gonna show you how to do all this yourself. This is the winch box from the front and we also added this electric trailer jack on the front to make my buddy's life easier. We use high quality grade eight hardware. So we're gonna show you how to do this. It makes your life a lot easier to have this battery source to pull cars up onto your trailer and to raise the tongue up and down on your trailer as well. This whole thing costs $1,100 in parts. I think it's a good deal because it probably increases the resale value of the trailer by a lot more than that. People are gonna have trailer envy. The first thing you wanna do is take your trailer and measure the height of the C-channel. And it's normally five or six inches. And you wanna measure this distance too, the thickness of the flange at the top. And then also measure the thickness of the C-channel material itself. The reason you want to do this is because you're going to be adding steel to your trailer and you don't want to add steel that's flimsier than the metal that's on it. If you add metal, you want it to be stronger, so a taller C-channel and then thicker material too, if possible. Also, you want to take some dimensions off of this as well, like the length here and length here. Now I'm going to show you some in-depth calculations for strength. If you want, you can skip ahead like two minutes because this is just math, engineering. This is an engineering channel and I like to get into the details. You can put your dimensions on AutoCAD or you can just use a pen and paper as well. Start laying out your metal and your structure on a drawing and, and start getting a feel for the dimensions you're gonna have to use. I included this software that I wrote. It is a material strength calculator for beams. So steel and aluminum beams. You can click mode up here, get safety factor, pick the material steel. Distributed load is the default that you wanna use here. It just means that the load is spread out across the whole beam. Pick 12,000 pounds. The winch I'm using here is 12,000 pounds. That's why I picked that. The span of three feet, even though the span is gonna be a little bit less than that, just gives you an additional safety factor. Look at your H. So we're gonna be using C channel over here. You can also look up C channel on a website to make sure you can buy it in these dimensions. So H is five inches. Our B dimension is 1.885 right here. And then our thickness of our material, I went with the thickest one I could get, 0.325 inches, put that in here. And then click calculate. And it gives you a safety factor of 3.31. In these projects, you always wanna have a safety factor of at least two to keep yourself safe. And 3.31 is really good. Another thing you can do is put in point load which was never gonna happen. Just pretend that you put all this load down on one specific point as opposed to distributed. Click calculate. You still have a safety factor of over one, 1 1.65. That's a good sign. Back to distributed load. Another thing you can do is click up here on mode to get maximum load with a safety factor of three in here. It'll tell you what your maximum load is. So 13,000 pound force. And then you could also do a safety factor of two, distributed load, keep that. Calculate 20,000 pounds force. And keep in mind, this is on a trailer, so most of the things you're gonna be pulling, if not everything, they're gonna be on wheels of some sort. You're never gonna be lifting something that's 20,000 pounds off of uh, the ground in the air. And so this is a very adequate safety factor. This is running 836 structural steel. I recommend using this or something similar. It's very resilient, uh, high quality steel, and it's not that expensive. Here's my buddy's trailer. We're gonna be adding a deep cycle marine battery, a solar panel trickle charger, a plug-in trickle charger, and then a 12,000 pound Apex Badlands winch with a synthetic cable. And then we're also gonna add an electric trailer jack to make my buddy's life a whole lot easier. From your original drawings and using the box to mock it up, get all your dimensions right. You can also use a cardboard template. We also had to relocate this box underneath here and I just threaded it in and moved it down below. 
The best tool to cut this stuff with is a bandsaw, but mine went down and then we broke the hand one. So we just cut all this stuff with an angle grinder. The good thing about using an angle grinder is you can use a cutting wheel, cut your steel, and then really quick just switch to a grinding wheel and then clean up all your edges. If you ever wondered how people steal catalytic converters, I think you're looking at the preferred tool. I recommend using a drill press to get through the A36 as much as possible. This is just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. We're also using high speed steel alloyed with cobalt for our bits. Eric, that was a close up. I added this little pump system to my drill press and it doesn't use pneumatics. I designed it myself and it delivers non-petroleum based cutting fluid to the bit. The bits last like 10 times longer. If anyone's interested, just drop a comment below and I'll do a video on it someday. I think it's pretty cool and it saves me a lot of money. But drilling by hand is not beneath us. You're probably gonna have to drill by hand on the existing portions of the trailer. Okay, stop. Don't, don't drill through the wire, dude. Oh, thanks, Eric. What would I do without you? We're welding here. I've done this entire job on my own trailer without welding anything. In this case, we made these little spacer plates to make the bottom of the box flush with the top of the C-channel. We welded it for fun and because the welds look cool. I can just freaking choose it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm obsessed with high quality hardware. This is grade eight, automotive grade, zinc coated steel, bolts, half inch with nylon lock nuts. And then we also use these wedge washers, they're called galvanized steel. I found them on Amazon. The bolts are from Menards and so are the nuts and the wedge washers, yeah, Amazon. The wedge washers are really cool though because they're made for bolting through the C-channel flange. I slowed this clip down so you could get a good idea of how this all goes together. We mocked this up probably three different times before we put it together for the final assembly. I got this plate that the winch bolts to at Harbor Freight and we got these two pieces of C-channel and put them vertically and the, the plate sits on top of there. I also added this back angle piece to support the battery and the other side of the box, this angle here. We dry fitted this using the box a few times before putting it all together. Measure twice, cut once. Here's one of the dry fit stages. It took us nearly an entire day to get to this point. Everything's bolted together, but we haven't painted any of the parts yet. We're pretty confident that everything is going to work the way we planned. We put a battery tray down here for the marine battery. And then we marked this location. We're gonna have to cut through the box to feed the cable through the box at some point. And inside the box, this is how everything looks from the bottom side, bolting that winch plate to our upright C-channel supports. This is basically how it's gonna look from the sides and the bottom of the trailer here. Everything in place, but not totally finished yet. Sometimes miracles do happen. I did not have to enlarge the opening at all for this electric trailer jack. This is the next day. All the parts have been painted with VHT roll bar and chassis paint. It's a very durable, fast drying spray paint. Here is one of those pretty welds. We finished everything with the exact same zinc bolts on top to make it look a little bit nicer. And hopefully this is the last time we ever have to put this box on this trailer. You can use a step bit and purposely oversize the holes a little bit on the bottom of the box to ensure good fitment. And here's the finished product. I'm not gonna show you the wiring circuit in detail, it's just simple 12 volt DC and everything came with instructions. This is how it looks closed and my buddy requested a plug-in trickle charger so he doesn't always have to use the solar panel and he can leave it topped off when it's in his garage. Here's some of that new hardware and the painted steel on the side. That MIG weld that I wanted to look good right there. Coming around the side of the box, you can see some of the hardware bolted on. Underneath the zinc coated bolts. And wherever I didn't use zinc coated bolts, I just used stainless, like these battery bolts. 
Those hold that battery tray. Here are those black M6 decorative bolts on the outside that hold stuff on the walls of the box. Solar panel is siliconed on, and then it also bolted in as well. I use silicone to keep the water out. This brush keeps mice out of the box. Here's the fair lead that feeds the wire or the uh, rope through. Here's the clasp inside the box, the big winch. There's also the controller for the, the solar panel. And then I added this battery voltage monitor so you can check the charge and the voltage as well. There's a light here, an LED light, and you can press this button on the solar panel charger and it illuminates the inside of the box. So if you're working, you're trying to hook stuff up. There's an electrical disconnect that you can turn on and off, which is nice to have. And this winch has a remote control that has a wire, but it's also wireless. So it charges itself and then you can disconnect it from the wire. In practice, this is how you use this thing. You turn it on and you're gonna go pick up a car or something. So you get your rope and your remote in hand and some winches you can easily pull out. This winch, it is not easy to pull out even when you have it completely disconnected from its gear set. So you have to basically manually feed it out with the remote control while you just walk it back. But it goes fast, it's not hard. And honestly, it makes life easier with this remote control. Walk the rope out, hook it to whatever you want to pull up onto the trailer, and it would probably pull a freaking tank up onto this thing. This remote turns off automatically, and then I just tuck it in here. There are so many small custom little things I did on this project. And none of it's necessary. I just did a lot of it because it was fun, but I'm happy with the end result. If you ever throw your back out, you'll really appreciate having one of these electric jacks. And if you still have your trailer when you're 90 years old, you'll probably appreciate it too. The jack also has a light on it as well. One last look inside the box. If you're interested in the wiring circuit, you can just pause the screen and pretty easily figure out the circuiting in here.